We had been Sydney dwellers for almost forty years, but suddenly, for various reasons, it seemed time to change. After a search along the east coast of Australia, finally one day we found it. It was the house at the edge of a forest. Little did we know it then, but our possession of this unique piece of real estate would be on a shared basis. This leaf gecko, designed to be almost invisible in the forest, somehow managed to fall into our kitchen sink. While out in the garden, a carpet python seeks refuge in a camellia bush. They are non-venomous and make good pets, so we are told. Nighttime finds this possum on the prowl, looking for something to eat. It seems to fancy our camera.
the black cockatoos arrive in the early autumn, flying into the forest to eat the mature pine cones and have a leisurely drink at the bird bath. The scrub turkeys are a strange lot. During the breeding season, the dominant male scrapes leaves off the forest floor to build a large mound for the females to lay the eggs in. The male must then constantly check the temperature of the mound as the eggs are hatched by the heat generated by the decomposing leaf litter, which must be kept at a constant 34 degrees. He judges the temperature by sticking his beak into the mound and then adding or removing litter from the nest as required. When the chicks hatch, they are on their own and have a low survival rate. Another unusual bird is the bowerbird. All bowerbirds construct courting bowers of some kind, but here we look at a satin bowerbird's bower in the nearby botanical gardens. He collects blue objects as a way to entice the female to his bower. This seems to be working as an olive green female, seen earlier, makes an appearance. What happens next is a little uncertain, but somehow I don't think it was love at first sight. Another of the bowerbird species that drops by is the spectacular region in his coat of yellow and black. The female, on the other hand, is a drab speckled brown. Here she is gathering up sultanas for her young ones. A relative of the bowerbirds is the catbird. Here both sexes look the same and both share the nesting duties. Why are they called catbirds? Well, just have a listen to their cry. By far the most friendliest and trusting of all the birds that live around us are the kookaburras. Here is one supervising Roger hanging out the washing. These are called laughing kookaburras. Again, listen to their call and you will understand why. <laughs> they often call in for a small tidbit or two. Not too much though, as we do not want them to become dependent on us. the one on the right. She decides to give her piece to the other. When I first gave this one something to eat, she flew in the next day and dropped a beetle at my feet. I gave her something, so she gave me something in return. It is also possible to carry on a conversation with them, if you are silly enough. They are good birds to have around because they clear the area of snakes which they like to eat. Watching the proceedings is this pair of young tawny frog mouths who also eat reptiles and rodents. They become active at night like this flock of fruit bats who take to the skies at twilight to go off in search of nectar and fruit. The house at the edge of the forest now bids you good night. Maybe we will get together again some other time.